Science has sent orbiters to Neptune, eradicated smallpox, and created a supercomputer that can do 60 trillion calculations per second. Science frees us from superstition and dogma and enables us to base our knowledge on evidence. Well, most of us. Previously, I've explored how organized faith and primitive religious values blight our lives. You take the women and dress them like whores on the street. I don't dress women, they dress themselves. I do not, but you allow it as a norm. The fault line runs deeper even than religion. There are two ways of looking at the world, through faith and superstition, or through the rigors of logic, observation and evidence, through reason. Yet today, reason has a battle on its hands. I want to confront the epidemic of irrational, superstitious thinking. Would you understand somebody on the spirit side with the name Charles? I believe that I give... You really believe it? I believe absolutely Seriously, 100% you believe it? that it's true, because it's been proven to me against my rationality. It's a multi-million pound industry that impoverishes our culture. Astrology leans toward the divine and the sacred, words which I know you don't like very much. And throws up new age gurus who exhort us to run away from reality. The tree-ness is the spiritual quality. Or the, or the rockness. Or the rockness. Yeah. As a scientist, I don't think our indulgence of irrational superstition is harmless. I believe it profoundly undermines civilization. Reason and a respect for evidence are the source of our progress, our safeguard against fundamentalists and those who profit from obscuring the truth. We live in dangerous times when superstition is gaining ground and rational science is under attack. In this program, I want to take on the enemies of reason. Three hundred years ago, in the Age of Enlightenment, scientists and philosophers from Galileo to David Hume had the courage to stand up for intellectual principles and reason. The rational science they pioneered has given us tangible benefits. Everything from antibiotics to electricity, sewage systems to sat-nav. And it's not just material progress. Increased life expectancy, health and leisure provided by modern medicine and industrial technology have given more people more time than ever before to educate themselves, express their creativity and ponder existence. And yet, into this better world that reason has built, primitive darkness is coming back, a disturbing pick and mix of superstitions. Where better to start my journey than a new age fair? Hello, what do you do? What sort of readings do you do? All kinds. I do the tarot, yeah. and then I also do the crystal ball. This is George. Hello. What, what can you do for me? All right, well, we can take your aura photograph. All right, I like that, yes. What do I do? Just sit on the throne there. Just take a seat, please. Shall I take my glasses off? Got here. Right. Now, you have got a couple of spirit guides around you at the moment, because I think there's something in your life changing, but I think this is about you as well, being more comfortable with yourself. Now, what you have here is you have somebody in spirit who's really, really close to you, and they've got their arms around your neck. Well, that's very nice to know. All these people reap the rewards of science and reason, but many here revel in a foggy suspicion of scientific thinking. OK, so, so you, you could teach me how to use my psychic energy? Yes. Is that the idea? Yes. Yeah. You can rely much better on that than on your head. Irrationality is woven into the fabric of modern life. We unthinkingly indulge unscientific delusion. 
I'm a schizophrenic Gemini. <laughs> Aquarius. Pisces. Astrology is so pervasive that just about everyone has been indoctrinated with the alleged character of their star sign. They're fiery, a bit unreliable, they love traveling, they're very expansive, they're quite spiritual. Loyal, um, spend too much money, a good leader. They can be a bit moody swinging one way and the other. They can be very bubbly one minute and then a bit down and you never know what you're going to get with them, my husband says. <laughs> A full quarter of the British population claim to believe in astrology. Day in, day out, astrological horoscopes get far more newspaper column inches than science. Amusingly, it falls foul of our modern taboo against lazy stereotyping. How would we react if a newspaper published a daily column that read something like this? Germans. It is in your nature to be hard-working and methodical, which should serve you well at work today. In your personal relationships, especially this evening, you will need to curb your natural tendency to obey orders. Chinese, inscrutability has many advantages, but it may be your undoing today. British, your stiff upper lip may serve you well in business dealings, but try to relax and let yourself go in your social life. And so on through 12 national stereotypes. Of course, the astrology columns are not as offensive as that, but we should ask ourselves exactly where the difference lies. Both are guilty of facile discrimination, dividing humanity up into exclusive groups based on no evidence. I always thought that by the 21st century, science and reason would have long since cleaned up. And yet every day of the week, we're encouraged to retreat into the fog of the superstitious past. Astrology is a primitive belief system made into elaborate pseudoscience. It arrogantly makes humans the focal point of the universe. The movement of planets is supposed to signify petty developments in our career or love life. It was developed in the second century AD by the philosopher Claudius Ptolemy and has not moved on since, despite the discovery of new planets and despite a shift in the Earth's rotational axis that has thrown Ptolemy's zodiac out by 23 degrees. You could ask a question. You could say, who has stolen my money? Um, it never made sense when it was first invented and it makes even less sense now. Read it off as though you mean they get it right. Do you think there's an actual physical influence of the planets that somehow beams down and influences uh, people? I think it's very hard to see that. I think if you try to understand astrology as a causal agent, right. I think that's hard to imagine how that would happen. I think you have to look at the planets as signifiers. When you look at the movement of Saturn around the zodiac, it's a very strong signifier of what's going on in individual lives. I don't even understand how they could possibly be signifiers. I mean, how, no. could, how could the rise of Saturn um, possibly be a signifier for something that's going on physiologically in a person's body? The position of planets in, in, in the signs of the work? zodiac. How would it This is what you keep coming back to ask me. How could it how possibly it work? work? Yes. And I've told you, I don't know. It's a deep, dark mystery. <laughs>